So 2023 was a pretty good year for tech. Uh, so let's talk smartphones. So let's get into it. What's up guys, welcome back to Michael's Tech Talk. So, here we are, as you can see, I've got most of my presents wrapped, give or take. So, uh, what about you? Have you got all your shopping done and all your presents and all wrapped? Has your list for Santa all been wrapped out? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's talk smartphones. I wanna start with foldables. I tried a couple of foldables this year. I tried the Pixel Fold and the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. I will be straight up and honest. Foldables for me, I couldn't daily drive. I just, the durability is not there for me and I need the durability because I would smash them. And if I were to smash a device that is like 1800 pound, no bueno, no bueno. And the more and more what I've been finding as well with a lot of my reviews, especially on the Pixel Fold, I have a lot of people reporting durability issues. For me, they're just not ready yet. Now, I will be honest, there is a lot of foldables out there that I still would like to try. So maybe in 2024, I will get my hands on a few more foldables because there are some really, really good options out there, especially from the likes of Oppo and OnePlus. Their foldables have been getting such a good write-up and I want to get my hands on them. So stay tuned for that. And if you want to see that, let me know in the comments down below and we can make it happen. You know yourself. But let's get down to the brass tacks. Slab phones is where I'm at. And for me, I have primarily rocked three slab phones this year. So let's talk about them. First off, starting this year, Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. This phone was such a good upgrade over the S22 Ultra, especially here in the UK. That Exynos chip that we got in the S22 Ultra is hot garbage, no bueno. The S23 Ultra with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, such an improvement. Better battery life, better performance, better heat dissipation, top notch. The cameras and all have been really good and yeah, it's a great phone, can't deny that. But is it my favorite phone? No, it isn't. Is it my favorite Android phone? No, it, it isn't. So, what are you gonna do? Pixel 8 Pro, as you can see, this is my phone. And yeah, is this a powerhouse of a phone? No, Tensor G2 at the best of times is pretty mid. What it lacks for in raw power, you'll get much better in the cameras and the Google services, the AI, the camera features. That's what you get in a Pixel. Pixel 8 Pro, I have, I did, I for, for whatever reason, I'm enjoying the Pixel 8 Pro a lot more than I enjoyed the S23 Ultra. And I don't know why, because on paper, the S23 Ultra should be ticking that box, but for some reason it isn't. But is it my phone of the year? It's not because this is this is my iPhone 15 Pro Max and for me the 15 Pro Max is the first iPhone in a good couple of years that I can finally say it doesn't feel like an S year because let's face it from the 12 Pro Max all the way up to the 14 Pro Max it was just pretty samey but the 15 Pro Max this year with the switch to titanium the 5x telephoto lens, like, is it the best tele? Is it the best cameras on paper? Absolutely not. But the portraits on the telephoto lens alone, man, I they have improved so much with the iPhone. And let's call a spade a spade. The iPhone is the king of 4K video, hands down. I cannot find anything else that can make me want to switch from this for video. I use this phone every day for my YouTube channel, all my B-roll, all that stuff is mostly shot on my iPhone. And yeah, it is the king. And the switch to USB-C has made my workflow so much more productive. I can plug in SSDs, remove footage, export projects. I can do editing and export projects from my phone. I wasn't able to do that before. And I felt like the iPhone was being held back. Now it feels more complete and it feels actually now like a pro device. Battery life is king again. It is back to being the battery champ. So for me, my best phone of 2023 is the 15 Pro Max. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below, but don't go anywhere because I have some clips from some of my favorite content creators on YouTube. I hit them up and said, guys, do you just want to collab on my best phone of 2023? And they were like, yeah, let's do it. 
So take it away, guys. Hello, everyone on Michael's channel. My name is John, and I'm also a tech creator on YouTube, and I go by Valley's Mind. Michael asked me if I wanted to share my phone of the year on his channel, and I feel like this video is going to be heavily swayed between either the S23 Ultra or the 15 Pro Max, and maybe dabble in like a Pixel 8 Pro or OnePlus Open. However, in my case, I actually did a complete 180 this year, and I did decide to switch to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Not only does the 15 Pro Max have exceptional stills performance with an amazing 5x optical lens this time around, but when it comes to video, the 15 Pro Max hits it on the head with the ability to shoot in ProRes Log. Not only can you record internally with the iPhone with the ability to shoot in up to 60 frames per second in that log format, but you can also record externally using an SSD or an SD card. This has personally made shooting some clips from my channel an absolute breeze, and it's something that after having used it, I really don't want to give up. Like, the video quality on this phone is seriously up there with some cheaper mirrorless cameras, and if I were to throw clips from this into one of my videos, it's almost indistinguishable at this point. It's crazy. I think that the battery life and the performance of the 15 Pro Max have also been a head turner for me, as the A17 Pro just handles everything that I throw throw at it like butter, while being able to last me almost an entire two days with lighter usage. As a content creator, this device has genuinely blew me away and made my life so much easier. And that's why I've been daily driving the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So thank you for having me on, Michael, and uh, I guess roll the next clip. Hi there, this is Maciej from Amustech and welcome to best smartphone of 2023 at Michael's Tech Talk. 2023 was an amazing year, at least I think so. We had a amazing Oppo Find X6 Pro. Uh, we had a first folding phone by Pixel, which I was really excited about. We had a USB-C based iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, which in my opinion was a really nice surprise. But I must say that the best phone of 2023 was the phone that changed the least. I mean, especially from the outside, because on the inside, there was a massive change and I'm talking about Galaxy S23 Ultra. I know, I know, so predictable, but when I decided to try the S23 Ultra, it was like, for me, a breath of fresh air. It has a awesome screen. I like the sharp corners. I, I, I like the boxy design of this, uh, of this phone. We have One UI, which at least for me, is one of the best versions of Android out there. I love all the features that it, it brings. It has really, really good thermals and amazing battery life. I mean, this is the phone that I am comparing other phones to right now. I would think about the most complete and most improved phone for 2023. It has to be the S23 Ultra, which I'm recording this video on right now, by the way. That's enough of me mumbling. Uh, thank you once again, Michael, for letting me join this video and have a great Christmas and a happy new year. Cheers. Hey, Michael, thank you so much for inviting me to this collab. Always great to join other creators here as well. And the best smartphone of 2023 for me has to be the Google Pick. No, just kidding. It has to be the S23 Ultra. And I'll give you the reason why in a moment. But if I was to pick one based on the cost benefit, the best value for money, it has to be the Pixel. The Pixel 8 Pro, what they've done here with AI and you know, the camera quality on this, it's just superb. I know it hasn't got all the bells and whistles that you can get in other phones, but Google did an amazing job here. The design is fantastic. It looks great. But why the S23 Ultra overall? I kind of knew this was going to be the case as soon as I started using this. It was such an improvement from the S22 Ultra, for example. As you know, over here in the UK, we've been using the Exynos version, right? The S22 Ultra and the S21 Ultra had that Exynos chip. Now, with the Snapdragon, this has been almost flawless. I mean, I, there was an update early on, like March, April, I don't remember. I didn't even notice. There was nothing for me that, that was like, okay, it needs fixing. I know some people complain about the shutter lag in the early days. I never really paid too much attention to it. The only phone that, in my opinion, could have taken the, the crown away from the S23 Ultra was the 15 Pro Max. And you know, Apple did an amazing job with this. The cameras on this are fantastic. Overheating issues aside, I will say this though, the video quality on this is on a different league altogether. I haven't seen anything better than this and I could safely use the footage from this 
in my videos without any issues. But for me, I do appreciate being able to do more with my phone, you know, especially outside of what I do here on content creation, you know, in my day-to-day -day job. This really doesn't get in my way, right? It just gets stuff done for me without any issues. I do appreciate being able to use multiple apps at the same time, at least two. I drive a lot to work and I commute a lot and I'm always doing something like, you know, navigation and, you know, listening to music, for example, or taking notes and dealing with my bank system apps. You know, there's a lot that I do that requires those two apps at the same time. Plus, you know, this is not just a styles as I keep hearing people call it. This is an amazing, you know, almost like a superpower when you get, for example, for photo editing, being able to get those very kind of intricate little details in Lightroom and editing photos on this does become an absolute superpower when you use and it. And the final point is this was released almost a year ago. And for it to be still this competitive, in my opinion, I haven't used every single smartphone that was released this year, but I used a fair few and this still for me, the king of 2023. Thanks again, Michael, and your viewers as well. If you're watching this, make sure to like this video and I'll see you guys soon. Cheers. Here and I want to thank you for having me on of your picks for a phone of the year of 2023. So I thought about this long and hard, and I want to say that my pick for 2023 is actually a device I never even bought or used. And it's kind of crazy to say that, but I don't think that the devices that we buy as techies is the best device for consumers. So I'm going to say that my pick of 2023 will be the Pixel 7a. And I'm only saying this as a $599 smartphone. This phone will be inside carrier stores and it will be considered a free phone or a free upgrade where they have to pay $0 and walk out with that store with about $12 payments per month. Because let's keep it real, consumers are actually getting contracts or being locked in two years on a lot of these devices. And that device packs a whole lot for a little price tag for most people. So I wanna go with the 7A this year as the phone for everyone, but us techies. What's going on everyone? So my submission for phone of this year, I really did think it was gonna be the S23 Ultra. When I picked that phone up, it was like nothing's coming close to this. Nothing's gonna beat it this year. I don't even think the iPhone is gonna beat it. Then I picked up the blue titanium iPhone 15 Pro Max and I was like, you know what? Yeah, for me personally, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is my go-to. I always go for the iPhone. I always go for the iPhone no matter what. And I figured that would be it. Then we picked up the Bay Blue Pixel 8 Pro, but that again, just couldn't cut it. So for me, my phone of this year was a phone I wanted to hate. And the phone I wanted to hate, the Google Pixel Fold Gem 1. I wanted to hate this phone so bad that I decided I wasn't even gonna pick it up during the launch. I picked up a Z Fold 5, went on with that for a couple of weeks, and then I changed my mind completely, completely 180'd, picked up a Pixel Fold, and I haven't been able to put it down since. This is the perfect form factor for a foldable phone, and definitely the one that should be in your pocket this year. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do in 2024. Huge thank you to Michael for having me on. Thank you very much. I will see you all soon. Hey Michael, just want to thank you for inviting me to your collaboration. You asked me what my favorite smartphone of the year is. If I were to choose one, I think it would be the iPhone 15 Pro because I am a total Apple sheep because of the action button alone. Honestly, uh, for people like myself with disabilities, I think the action button is a really nice touch. Uh, we first saw it on the Apple Watch and now uh, the iPhone. And honestly, I think it is a really great tool that a lot of disabled people can use. Um, and I'm really hoping that in the next year or so, we can actually see it come to not only the pro versions of iPhone, but all the versions of iPhone. Thank you, Michael, for inviting me, and on to the next person. Hey, what's good, everybody? Ben from Lover of Tech. Really appreciate being on Michael's channel here for this end of the year collab for 2023. And yes, smartphone of the year for me, Without a doubt, Galaxy S23 Ultra, this is the one since the 1st of February 2023 has stood the most when it comes to the test of time 
It has everything. The camera package, whether it's the extravagant zoom, the main camera being 200 megapixels, the high resolution, 120 hertz LTPO display that's super bright, the design, the battery life, especially being all Snapdragon this year, for us that have been suffering Exynos all this time, is great. I'm gonna keep it simple. It's the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Happy New Year, happy Christmas, happy holidays. See you on the other side. And thank you for allowing me to be on this collab. Hey Michael, thanks for having me on this fantastic collaboration for Smartphone of the Year 2023. My smartphone is obviously Snapdragon powered. I'm pretty sure you can probably guess what it is. It's probably gonna be a lot of people's choices this year. And mine is the S23 Ultra. Here it is. Oh, case to fire case. Get it off. Oh. Yep, yeah, here it is in all her glory the S23 Ultra. Now the main attraction for me is the camera system as a whole. I think it's got everything. It's fantastic. I love the 10 times optical zoom in video and obviously in pictures as well. The quality is excellent. When I'm out and about recording my son playing football, it's just perfect. I love the large screen as well. This is absolutely beautiful. And it's got a super large battery and excellent battery life. So the S23 Ultra is my smartphone of the year 2023. Thanks for watching and have a Merry Christmas. People, this your boy Piper, the man about tech, back again for the video. And the homie Michael invited me into the video and he wanted to know, Viper, what is your favorite smartphone of 2023? Now, this year in particular, this is a very tough question because I've used a lot of phones this year. I've used everything from the Galaxy S23 Ultra to the Google Pixel Fold. I use the Z Fold 5. I've have the OnePlus open and I have iPhones as well. But the best smartphone that I have used in my 2023 smartphone of the year has to be none other than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm the captain of Team Apple, but you have to remember, this is the first time I have ever given an iPhone smartphone of the year. But Viper, why is the iPhone smartphone of the year this year? Well, as soon as you put this iPhone and hold it in your phone and hold it in your, hold it in your, well, as soon as you take this phone out of the box, you can feel how thin, how light it is. And that was made possible by Apple's choice to include a titanium frame this time. We love a good titanium frame. Look at those buttons. Also, I love the inclusion of the action button, which I currently have mapped to the camera. So we definitely appreciate that. Speaking of camera, the camera has also been improved. I don't know if you all realize, but when you take pictures with the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, your pictures come out at a default 24 megapixels, which is twice what the iPhone 14 came out at. That just means your pictures are more detailed, they have more clarity since you have more pixels to use. Pictures just look better on iPhone. And we all know iPhone take consistent pictures. You just point, shoot, boop, and you are good to go. So between the titanium frame, the improved camera, the durability and the thinness and lightness, not to mention USB type C on iPhone for the first time. That is why the iPhone 15 Pro Max is my smartphone of the year. And thanks to the homie Michael for having me in the video. Hey, it's iCave Dave from the internet. So what is my smartphone of the year for 2023? The eye at the start of my name might have tipped you off slightly, but let's play the game anyway. I think the phone that's made the biggest leap this year is the base iPhone 15 after the absolute disappointment that was the iPhone 14 last year, being a 13 with a different number scribbled on it and getting improvements like going from a 12 to a 48 megapixel camera, getting the dynamic island USB-C, which apparently some people think is a better shape for a hole to be. It's basically an iPhone 14 Pro, but with one less camera lens and no ProMotion, but nobody can tell the difference on that anyway. Really great value. So onto the pros, the new 5X camera on the 15 Pro Max is great. And the weight reduction that you get from moving to titanium from stainless steel is also a huge win. But the biggest thing for me is that A17 Pro chip with the ray tracing on the GPUs. Now the calibre of the games that you can now play uh, from your pocket is insane and I'm really excited for that chip to come to something like an iPad Mini because that's what I want to have in my pocket for playing Call of Duty on. Now I'm sure that everyone has pretty much picked the iPhone 15 Pro Max but for me, having gone back to the regular size iPhone with the uh, 14 Pro last year, I'm going to pick the 15 Pro. The max size is just too much for me now. Give me the 16 with a periscope camera on it next year and I think we will have peaked. 
Plus, iPhones get iMessage for more than three days at a time, so that's probably the biggest win. Sorry, Beeper. Hey, this is Pete on Michael's Tech Talk. I have two phones for you. The first being the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And this is like, obviously very personal opinion. I wanted to buy a smaller iPhone this year, but I bought the bigger one because of the five times telephoto camera on the end of it. And it is very, very good to be fair if you compare this with something like the S23 Ultra's, you know, insanely 200 megapixel, like 100 times zoom or whatever it is. It can get very close. It's getting very, very close in terms of the software and hardware nowadays. But the thing with the iPhone, I found is that I don't enjoy using the phone. I enjoy the ecosystem. And this is the whole thing with Apple, you know, Apple iPhones. I could be watching the Apple TV and then it will pop up on the dynamic island that I can then tap on that. Control the TV, I can turn the TV off. Great if you lose remote control. And it's just little things like that that keep pulling me back into the Apple ecosystem. However, I always keep a second phone in my pocket and I can't tell you why, but I have kept the Pixel Fold in my pocket ever since it's launched. I've literally used it day to day and I can't explain why because it's a bad phone. It's the first generation uh, Pixel foldable device. The cameras could do with an upgrade. It's got an old generation chipset on it. Literally, they launched the Pixel 8, what, two months after the Pixel Fold with a newer chipset on it. It just didn't make sense. But for some reason, I still daily carry this phone. I think it might come down to the fact that the front screen is a lot more usable so I can actually pick it up, use it. I like just simple things like talking about the Apple ecosystem. The Pixel, just the software works really, really well. Things like when I'm at the gym, I am doing a workout, I'm listening to music. I want to watch a, um, you know, I'm following a workout plan which has a YouTube video that shows me what I need to be doing. I'll tap on the YouTube video and now it will play the YouTube video, but then give me, I can quickly swipe across to change back to the music I was playing. Whereas on something like the iPhone, it completely loses it. I have to go and find the music app and hit the play button. It's just a few extra steps to go through on the iPhone. So can't tell you why, but the Pixel Fold for me, I guess is phone of the year, given that that's what I'm daily driving as well as the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Cheers, and um, I hope you have a good Christmas and uh, speak soon. Cheers, buddy. Bye-bye. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of these guys' picks? Uh, is there any phone that hasn't been featured that you feel is the phone of 2023? Let me know in the comments down below. I just want to take this opportunity to say 2023 has been a bit of a mixed year for me. In terms of YouTube, 2023 has been my best year on YouTube. I have experienced an, an unbelievable amount of growth and I have nothing but thanks for you guys because if it wasn't for you guys tuning in, smashing those like buttons, hitting that subscribe button and watching these videos, I wouldn't be here to do it. So for that, thank you very much. While this year has been a bit of a personal struggle for me and Kylie this year, um, the support from everybody, uh, friends, family, and even subscribers on the channel that have reached out and offered support. Guys, I can't thank you enough for all of your support and kind words over the year. It has meant so much to, to myself and Kylie, and we thank you so much. Thank you. On that note, I just want to take this opportunity to wish you and your family and everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I hope 2024 is a good one for you. So on that note, I'm going to wrap it up. But if you do like down to earth tech review and accessory videos, you know where to come. Until the next one, I'll catch you later.